This is Mr. Martin. These are video notes for Precalculus Honors, section 8.2. Uh, we've been talking about sequences and series uh, in general. We haven't talked about any specific kinds. Um, but in section 8.2, we're going to be talking about a very specific type of a sequence. We're talking about an arithmetic sequence. And then we'll talk about uh, arithmetic series. So a sequence is arithmetic if the difference between consecutive terms differences between the consecutive terms are the same. So if you notice here we have the value of d, that's typically the variable we use uh, for the common difference. And it's going to be the same no matter which two consecutive terms we subtract. So I could subtract a2 and a1, I could subtract a3 and a2, any term a sub n and the term before it, if I subtract it, I'll get that common difference. So This last part here, if we just take a look at the D and this part here, if we look at that, if we solve that uh, for A sub n, what we end up with is a recursive sequence, a recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence. So A sub n is A sub n plus 1 a sub n minus 1 plus d. So each term is the term before it plus the common difference. Now keep in mind the common difference could be positive or negative so the numbers could be getting smaller as well. So that's our recursive sequence uh, formula. If we want an explicit formula to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence we'll use the uh, following explicit formula. So here's our explicit formula and we'll use this quite often and um, we'll go into the derivation of this in class uh, but uh, I'm not going to really go into it in the video so but if we take a look at this any value a sub n it's going to be the first term plus the common difference n minus one times so if I'm on the first term and I want to go to the fifth term I have to add the common difference five minus one or four times Okay, and this is a general relationship uh, for the nth term based on the first term, but really there's a relationship between any two terms, a sub n and a sub m. Here's the relationship between those. So any term a sub n is going to be any term a sub m plus the common difference n minus m times. Okay, this n minus m will tell us how many times I have to add the common difference to go from the a sub m to a sub n. And we'll look at these in some examples as well. All right, so moving on to the examples, some of these I'm going to work out in the video. Some of them I'm going to uh, have you work out on your own, and then we'll talk about them in class. So for example, one, we want to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence a sub n whose initial term um, is a sub 1 and the common difference d are given and we also want to find the 51st term. So we're going to find a recursive and explicit formula. So for the first one let's start with recursive so we know we have to define our seed value a sub 1 is going to be negative 2 and then each value after that a sub n is going to be the term before it a sub n minus 1 plus the common difference which is 4. So this is our recursive formula. Again it's not quite as helpful uh, to us as an explicit formula. This is useful more for uh, computer programming and uh, if you've done any computer programming you may have used some recursive formulas. Now let's take a look at uh, the explicit formula. So our general formula for an arithmetic sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. All right, And we know the first term and we know the common difference so we'll just substitute those in and do a little simplifying. So I get a sub n is equal to negative 2 plus n minus 1 times 4. And if we distribute and combine like terms, we end up with a sub n is equal to 4n minus 6. There's our explicit formula. So go ahead and pause the video uh, and um, 
Actually, let's find uh, the 51st term. We have to find a sub 51. a sub 51 is going to be 4 times fifty one minus six so that's gonna give us one ninety eight so there's the fifty first term okay so now you can go ahead and pause the video and try uh, part B and we'll talk about that in class make sure you got the right answers for the recursive formula the explicit formula and again the fifty first term alright let's move on to another type of example um, we want to find the hundredth term of the sequence that begins 2, 4, and 6. So we're going to check to make sure that this is arithmetic. We can see that it's going up by 2 each time. Remember that's very important that the formulas that we're talking about today can only be used with arithmetic sequences, a sequence where the difference between each term is constant. And we want to find a sub 100. So I know that a sub n is going to be a sub m, any term, plus the common difference n minus m times. Okay, and in this case we really could use the first term, the second term, or the third term. Just for the sake of this example I'm going to use the third term. I'm going to use a sub 3. So that means that a sub 100 is going to be a sub 3 plus 100 minus 3, that's my n minus m, and then the common difference we figured out was 2. Um, so that means that a sub 100, the third term is 6, that's going to be 97 times 2, and that should come out to be 200. Okay, so again, I could have used the first term. I could have used the second term just for the sake of the example I used the third term. Uh, Any one you want to use is fine. Alright, moving on to the next example. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down and we'll talk about those first thing uh, at the beginning of class next time I see you. Alright, so we know the eighth term of an arithmetic sequence is 25. So a sub 8 is 25. And the twelfth term, a sub 12, is 41. Okay, key here, they tell us it's arithmetic sequence. We want to write the first five terms of the sequence. So somehow we've got to find the common difference and we've got to find the first term. And once I get that, I can find uh, the other terms in the sequence to round out the first five terms. So I know that the twelfth term is related to the eighth term by adding my common difference 12 minus 8 times. All right, so to go from the 8th to the 12th, I'm going to add D four times. All right, and I know the 12th term is 41. I know the 8th term is 25. That's going to be plus 4D. If I solve this for D, I'm going to get 4. So now I know what the common difference is. And uh, I'm going to use the same type of relationship, that same formula now, to find a sub 1. So I could use the 8th term or I could use the 12th term. I'm just going to use the 8th term. I know the 8th term is equal to the first term plus the common difference 8 minus 1 times. So that's 8 minus 1D. So the 8th term is 25. We're looking for the first term. And that's going to be plus 7 times the common difference which we already figured out was 4 so if we solve this for a sub 1 we're gonna get negative 3 okay so we want the first five terms here's a sub 1 now we just need to find a sub 2 a sub 3 a 4 and a 5 now we could find an explicit formula and then just plug in 2 3 4 and 5 However, we know what the first term is, we know what our common difference is, so I simply have to add my common difference to the first term to get the second term. So the second term is going to be negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. The third term is going to be the second term plus 4. 
So that's 5. The fourth one is going to be the third term plus 4, which is 9. And the fifth term is going to be the fourth term, 9, plus the common difference, 4 or 13. Again, if you wanted to find an explicit formula and then just plug in 2, 3, 4, and 5, you could do that as well. Go ahead and uh, pause the video and give this a try. And then we'll talk about that to see what everyone got when I see you in class. All right, moving on to sums of an arithmetic sequence. So let's take a look at an, uh, an example here. Let's find the sum of the integers from 1 to 100. So basically what we're going to look for is I want the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, and then we're going to go all the way up to 98 plus 99 plus 100. Okay, so you could just start punching the numbers in your calculator and adding them away. Uh, that wouldn't be very efficient. But let's take a look at this sum and let's look at it backwards also. So the sum could also be written as 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus, and then we would keep adding until we got down to 3 plus 2 plus 1. So I have the same sum, I just wrote it forwards and backwards. But what I'm going to do, a little trick here, is I'm going to add these together. So now I have s plus s, that's going to give me 2s. And then I have 1 plus 100, so that's 101. And then I have 2 plus 99, that's also 101. And 3 plus 98, that's also 101. And then I'm going to keep on adding, and all of my sums, when I add this uh, series forwards and backwards, is going to be 101. So plus 101, plus 101, plus 101. And since I'm adding the numbers from 1 to 100, I know I'm going to have a hundred sums of 101. So this 2s is going to be a hundred times 101, a hundred sums of 101. So that means that s is going to be 50 times 101 if I divide both sides by 2. And we end up that the sum is 5,050. All right, so just a neat little trick there. And we're actually using this as an example to um, derive the formula. And we're going to go through this derivation again in class. Uh, but if you go on to the next page, you can see we have the nth partial sum formula. So partial sum meaning, meaning we're not adding every single term of the sequence. Okay, we're only going to add the first 50, the first 60, the first 12, the first 9, whatever it's going to be. So what we're going to do in class is we're going to derive this formula for the sum of the first n terms. It's going to be n over 2 times the quantity of the uh, first term plus the last term in the sequence. Okay, or another form, if, if we don't have a sub n, we can substitute um, a sub 1 is minus n minus 1 times d, so we could substitute this, and if we do a little simplifying, then we get n over 2 times 2a1 plus n minus 1d. So you can see what that would look like if you substituted that in for n and did some simpl simplifying. Okay, so um, we've got uh, two more examples here. Go ahead and give those a try and uh, see what you get. If you want to uh, check your answers, um, you should get 4,600 for this one and see what you can do on example 5. If you did this correctly, you should get 6,273.8. And again, you can use your graphing calculator to verify, but I'm going to expect to see your work on those as well. Um, and it's always important that you uh, write down those questions so you don't forget and ask me the next time you see me in class. And uh, we'll see you next time.